Hello everyone, Okianski here, and welcome to another scripting tutorial. Today, I am picking up from my last video where I showed you how to make a free-floating unanchored ball so that you could have it suspend in the air. And then when you touched it or had exerted another force on it, it would act without gravity. Today, we're going to be trying to figure out how to do that that exact same thing except with a model. Also, uh, once we do figure out how to do that with a model, I'll then show you how to do this uh, gravity launch zone where a player enters it and then they float up and then they hit another zone and their gravity goes away. Alright, let's get started. So I've gone ahead and added a couple character models named Model A and Model B. And that is because there are two ways you can do this, and I'm going to be showing you both ways. Uh, but first, I went ahead and made a quick little script called model suspend. And basically what this is, is basically the same thing as part suspend that I did for this sphere to get rid of its gravity. Uh, and I did that on the humanoid root part of the model. So in theory, if I go ahead and run this, this should keep the model suspended in the air. However, however, unfortunately, it does not do that. And the reason is because when you're working with models, you cannot get the mass of just one part. You have to get it. You have to get the mass for um, a part and all of the all of the parts attached to it. Or in this example. I will uh, get the mass of the humanoid root part, but then ignore the mass of the rest of the parts uh, by making them massless. So they're pretty similar, but just slightly different uh, methods of doing the same thing. So let's go ahead and modify this uh, script. Uh, let me just delete everything, or at least half of this stuff. And you see I have model A and which is workspace on model A and a new body force. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what is the total mass of my model. So I'm going to do local total mass equals zero and then for uh, descendant index descendant in pairs model A get descendants do and what this is going to do is going to make a iterator for every uh, descendant of the model which would include uh, all of these parts uh, all of these instances within the model and then any parts within those instances so all of the descendants Next, I'm going to do if descendant is a base part because there are some instances inside the character that are not base parts that don't have a mass that we don't want to include. Uh, it will give us an error if we try to get mass on something that's not a base part. And then what we're going to do is total mass equals total mass plus descendant get mass and we use base part because um, not everything is exactly a part class um, the head and the humanoid root part are part classes but things like the right hand and the left hand and the torso are mesh parts which constitute as base parts but they're not just parts so but they do have get mass all right, so now that we have a total mass, now we just do uh, what we did before with body forces. If you haven't seen my last video, be sure to check that out. If you need a little reference for body force, I'll also link the uh, body force developer page in the description. But I'm going to go ahead and do vector3.new, uh, 0 on the x. For the y, we do workspace.gravity times total mass and then zero on the z 
and then parent the body force to uh, the humanoid root part. Model A humanoid root part. Now if we run this, and then we move the character up, it should say suspended in the air. It's got uh, gravity acting on it, but then it's also got the body force that's perfectly calculated to counteract that gravity, uh, taking, in, taking into account the mass of the object. Alright, so that was the first method of suspending a model in the air, but now we're going to go over the second method, which I believe is a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and make a new script and call it model suspend B. Then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing we did last time with the model, local model B equals workspace dot model B. And then make a new body force, local body force equals instance dot new body force. All right, but now instead of calculating the total mass of a model, instead we're going to get the mass of just one part and then turn the mass off for e every other part, making them massless. They have a, each part has a property called, um, if we look inside the model, every base part has a property called massless. And if you turn that on, uh, they no longer have a mass that can affect a uh, gravitational pull. And if we turn every single one off, we can just focus on one of the parts. So I'm going to do um, for descendant index descendant in pairs uh, model b get descendants just like last time. And this time I'm going to do if descendant is a base part and not descendant that name or actually let's make this a little simpler and descendant that name is not equal to with the squiggle equal humanoid root part then so what this says is same thing as last time with the if descendant is a base part but then also the descendant the descendant's name must not be humanoid root part because that's the part we're going to keep the mass on. And then we'll do uh, descendant.massless is equal to true to turn uh, on that massless property. And then now every single base part in our character is now massless except for the humanoid root part. So now we just do what we did with any other uh, anti-gravity part and just go ahead and do body force dot force is equal to vector 3 dot new 0 workspace dot gravity times model b dot humanoid root part get mass and then 0 on the z And I can clean this up a little bit by just taking this out, saying local anti-gravity force equals, well actually I'll call it anti-gravity y, and then just putting anti-gravity y. That makes it a little bit a little bit read, more readable. And then body force dot parent, of course, is the humanoid root part model b dot humanoid root part and now now that we have uh, all descendant base parts set to massless except root part and now that we've um, found the normal anti-gravity force it should um, if we go ahead and put him in the air, he should not fall, and he does not. So there we have it. There's two methods. One, getting the total mass count, and the other, just finding the mass of one and turning the rest off. For the um, 
gravity lift, I'll be doing the second one because I believe it's a little easier and uh, easier to manage. So we'll be we'll be using that. But you've got either one if you want to use it either way. All right, guys, that's all I have for part one, where I showed you how to make a model float in the air the same way we did with the uh, parts for anti-gravity. Uh, in the next part, we'll be taking what we learned with the models and applying them to touch parts, which will act as zones that can actually change the gravity of a player. So hope to see you guys in the next part. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment or add me on Discord. And I will catch you guys later.